Hello there. In this tasting, I'm continuing my look at some of the leading Pinot Noirs from New Zealand's central Otago region. So we're down in the southern part of New Zealand's South Island. And this is Burn Cottage 2020 Pinot Noir. So I'll just let you have a good old look at the label there because it's really a fantastically detailed, um, almost like an old sort of fashion engraving. That I love the label on Burn Cottage. It's, it's has a wonderful individuality to it. Now, Burn Cottage was established in 2003. Their ethos is that everything is naturally farmed, they don't use chemical fertilizers, and the Burn Cottage vineyard lies in a natural amphitheater at the bottom of the Pisa range. Evidently, the vineyard here is planted with 10 clones. Now, they have given me a list, but there only appear to be nine clones on it, so I must be missing something. But there's a wide variety of clonal material being used here. Everything from the Abel clone, so New Zealand's own special clone of Pinot Noir derived from the vineyards of Domaine Romani Conti, supposedly. There's some plantings of MV6, which is uh, actually an Australian clone and was part of the clones that James Busby collected and brought to Australia in the, the, the late 19th century. There are Dijon clones, 114, 115, 667, 777 and 828. There's what I believe a Davis clone, CL5, and there's another clone that's very popular in, in this area called 10 bar 5. I suspect the, the 10th clone is probably something like the Lincoln clone or something like that. But, as I say, there are only nine detailed in the notes that I have. So, as well as the 24 hectare Burn Cottage vineyard, Burn Cottage now also, since 2017, own the Sauvage vineyard, which is on Felton Road. But the fruit from this, for this particular wine just comes from the Burn Cottage vineyard. 2020 was, I suppose it was a mildly difficult year. It's very changeable early in the season. In November and December, it was quite cool and there was a fair amount of rain. As a result of the wet soils and the cool conditions, flowering was quite extended. It wasn't all concentrated at one time. There was good warmth in January and February, but again, higher than average rainfall. And then it was much milder and cooler in March. So what happened was a, a real extended ripening season, which actually has given the, f the fruit some, some, some excellent balance in 2020, because the acidity was retained very well picking for this wine took place between the 25th of March and the 8th of April. A portion of whole bunches was retained into the fermentation, about 7% evidently. Fermentation went on using the indigenous yeasts that had found their way into the winery on the fruit from the vineyard, and a low sulphur regime was used. A period of fermentation and maceration went on for 18 days, and then the wine was moved into barrel. Wine aged, I believe, for at least a year in French oak, and about 25% of that was new. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we, and see what we make of it. As is, I think, fairly typical for Otago's Pinot Noirs, there's a nice dark ruby red colour. This has a touch of, you know, a hint of purple on the rim, but it's not particularly deep. I, I mean, that's a medium depth of colour. I can see through it very easily, swirling it. The alcohol noted on the label is 13%. It is forming tears slowly on the side of the glass as I swirl it, but thing, nothing hugely pronounced. The aromas, let's have a look at those, shall we? Hmm, that's quite a... It's quite an enchanting aroma, actually. A, a lovely ripe red fruit, so maybe hints of raspberry, but really sort of predominantly juicy red cherry but then there are slight meaty notes as well and there are hints of spice and that, those hints of spice it's sweet spice you know cinnamon nutmeg ginger that sort of thing and just behind that there's a sort of a lifted red cherry maybe slightly mulberry perfumed note coming off you know quite High toned and elegant, but not not an overripe note. A really lovely fresh aroma. So it's for taste. There is a good freshness, but primarily there is this lovely soft, ripe juicy fruit. It's red cherries at the early end of the spectrum. There's 
was a sort of a delicate raspberry note, but then actually the, the, the richness and the warmth of the fruit comes through and it, it gets more of that sort of concentrated cherry, almost with a slight jammy note to it, giving the ripeness. It's not an over-ripeness, but it's a really rich and fairly intense note. The, the wine is not particularly heavy. You know, I'd say that was mid-weight. And, and there's a lovely supple structure there, you know, more velvety, not particularly angular. There's a little bit of sort of drying, cedary tannin showing itself there, just with sort of a little bit of grip and the, and the sweet spice notes. But actually the, the, the juiciness of the fruit is, is enveloping that and it, it's not able to assert itself over the fruit particularly. I guess the alcohol at 13% is, is just rounding out the palate really quite nicely, but there's lovely round fruit there anyway, and it's leaving this juicy red cherry and raspberry note on the finish there. And as I say red cherry and then the, the raspberries, it's just that slightly high-toned perfumed component there that lingers really quite beautifully. So yes, I, I think a wine with some real character of, of, of Central Otago with its weight and its richness but yes a lovely elegance that I think we'll see this wine develop over the next four or five years into something possibly even more refined and uh, you know with a, a delicate silky uh, elegance that, that will be very enjoyable well that is very enjoyable now and will I think continue to develop beautifully so thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed the tasting if you found it interesting do please press the like button do consider sharing the, the video with any friends you think might be interested and do think about signing up and following us on YouTube it would it would be great to have you joining us regularly if you have any comments please leave those in the comments box below it would be fantastic to know what your feedback is about the wines we're looking at the tastings we're doing or anything else related to that but most importantly do please see if you can find some time to join us for another tasting in the very near future won't you thanks again bye for now